let's pick off right where we left my last video on glycolysis. So, we ended glycolysis, we had pyruvate, we didn't have any oxygen, so we turned it into lactate. But now we have oxygen, so we use NAD+, and dehydrogenated lactate to form pyruvate. Seems simple, right? Well, that was inside the liver. And then we added a, um, we added nothing to pyruvate. We're going to take away stuff from pyruvate. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to finish the first stage of acetyl-CoA production and then start the second stage, acetyl-CoA oxidation, which is where we get the bulk of our energy from the acetyl-CoA oxidation. And then we do the oxidation of energy carriers, which will be my next video. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. First, always remember that there are two pyruvate molecules. You have to remember that or else your count will be way off. So take your pyruvate and decarboxylate it. Releasing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide then encounters an enzyme that will um, literally um, cram it onto what's going to happen next. So now we have this little puny two carbon molecule called acetaldehyde. Gets crammed onto an enzyme, which I'm going to represent by my hand. Crammed onto an enzyme. And so is the hydrogen crammed. And seriously, it crams, it gets crammed on to this ginormous molecule called coenzyme A, made of a B vitamin and the nucleobase adenine, the, the nucleotide of adenine. And then what's left is a reduced enzyme, which is oxidized by NAD+. I'm going to show each NADH by H2. You can really count each hydrogen as NAD+. So, now we have our acetyl-CoA. Now we can enter the acetyl-CoA oxidation phase. happens first is we run into this molecule which I made totally wrong so give me a little bit of time to fix it we run into this molecule called oxaloacetic acid also known as OAA some abbreviated OOA some abbreviated OAA I abbreviate OAA. And we take acetyl CoA, and the CoA literally crams the, this acetyl group, which is a methyl group connected to a carbonyl group, onto this ginormous molecule, which looks like acetyl. It has an acetyl group, but it has two, uh, two carboxyl groups. That's where the oxalo comes from. So without further ado, let's get this process started. The first phase of the citric, the first step of the citric acid cycle. Putting it all together. The synthase step. Acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate combine to form citrate. 
or citric acid, as it's also known as. Um, then, coenzyme A is put out of its misery by, it doesn't need to be held on to anymore, so it's released by, hydro, by hydrolysis, which is using water to split something up. ADP can be hydrolyzed can undergo hydrolysis to ADP in a phosphate group. Anything with, co with a coenzyme attached can undergo hydrolysis. Now I have this bulky 6-carbon citric acid. It undergoes a little bit of a rearrangement where it loses a water molecule forming aconitate or aconitic acid. The same enzyme, aconitase, adds the water mo molecule back. But in the way that it's added back, the hydrogen atom and the hydroxyl group are reversed. The hydroxyl group used to be here. Now it's moved over there. So isocitrate formed. Then we get our first meat of, this, of acetyl-CoA oxidation. We simply pop two hydrogens off of this molecule and here are they forming NADH plus, plus the hydrogen. This molecule is oxalosalicylate and it's unstable. So it gets decarboxylated. Producing carbon dioxide. Carbon di uh, now we have formed a 5-carbon compound called alpha-ketoglutarate. The glute comes from the root word for the backbone of the molecule. Alpha keto means that on the alpha carbon, the first one after the main group, it has a ketone. Alpha ketoglutarate is decarboxylated yet again. Producing carbon dioxide. Very sad looking. Um, and we form sesanaldehyde. Sesanaldehyde needs to be a little bit oxidized by coenzyme A. Same manner that acetyl-CoA was produced. The hydrogens come off, coenzyme A gets crammed on, and this forms sesanyl-CoA and another NADH molecule. Sussanyl-CoA. Sussanyl-CoA encounters a free-floating phosphate, which I'm going to represent by this. PO3 negative OH. More like H. H, PO3 negative OH. So we find the H to PO4 negative. Um, the free floating phosphate displaces coenzyme A, forming a high energy bond. Coenzyme A is then released. This forms succinyl phosphate. Then, a molecule that we haven't seen before, it's called GDP versus ADP. I'm going to show these both. ADP will just be hanging around. GDP will do all the work. It will pull off the phosphate. G stands for guanosine. Then GDP will happily trade phosphate, trade the phosphate with ADP, forming ATP. 
this could also happen in the reverse order. Now it's the reaction NTP plus AT, NTP plus ADP equals ATP plus NDP, reversible. Um, now we form succinate. Succinate gets oxidized to fumarate, which produces a newcomer. FA, FADH2, like NADH, is an electron carrier. I'm setting it down to help count. Then, imagine if someone's smoking and the fumes are surrounding you. You just want to throw a bucket of water on them. So we'll do that. And when you throw the bucket of water on them, the hydroxyl adds to that carbon and the hydrogen adds to that carbon. We're almost done. Last step. Now, the, they're pro they probably have a lot of malice in them after you threw that water on them. So this molecule is called malate. And we solve malate's problems by taking away two hydrogen atoms and forming the starting material, oxaloacetate. And that's it. That is the Krebs cycle. Now, let's count them up. One, so let's count up the energy production. One, two, three, four NADHs. One from oxidative decarboxylation. That's why I put this one out of place. Three from the Krebs cycle. 1 FADH2 from the Krebs cycle. Now, let's count these up. So we have 6, we have 4 NADHs. Multiply that by 2 because we have 2 acetyl CoAs entering the Krebs cycle and 2 pyruvates entering oxidative decarboxylation. So, because for, if we're counting for one molecule of glucose. FADH2, you also multiply that, you also make another FADH2 because the Krebs cycle runs twice. Runs twice. So, we can count each hydrogen as an energy carrier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NADHs and two FADH2s. Multi and also recall that we formed two NADHs in glycolysis. So, count these guys up and we have 10 NADHs two FADH2s, four, uh, two A, four, ADP, four ATPs, and also, mul and then multiply the number of NADHs by three, and multiply the number of FADH2s by two. So far we have 38, and you get the number of ATPs produced in the electron transport chain. 34 ATPs. And those 34 ATPs will be produced in my next video. Hope you produce and oxidize some acetyl-CoA today.